workshop series. Today I'm doing number two on the general curriculum math subtest. If p is a positive integer, which of the following also must be a positive integer? The key word is integer. You have to understand what this word means in order to solve this problem. We can think about an integer as being integers are positive and negative and they're divisible by one with no remainder. So here, here are some examples of positive integers. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. These are integers. They can be positive or negative. As long as you can divide these numbers by, by 1 and get a value that has no remainder. Okay, but I'm only interested in the positive portion of the positive integers. So that means I have to look at the values equal to 1 or greater. Well, is zero? I understand why negative 2 and negative 1 is not positive. Sure, I get it. What about zeros, though? Zero is neither positive or negative. It's neutral. So we're only going to be working with values like 1, 2, and 3. And we're only going to be looking for you know values that get us an answer that are also positive integers, like 1, 2, and 3. By the way, uh, just to write this for later on, we're going to talk about another name of positive integers, which is natural numbers. So if you see, if it refers to an integer as a positive integer, it's also referring to natural numbers. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get cracking on this problem here. Using the numbers like 1, 2, and 3, which one of these is also going to get me a positive integer? Well, if I did 1 minus 1, I'd get 0. Guess what? We just said this before. Zero is neither positive or negative. So it's not going to get me a positive integer. All right, what if I try it with um, one over one? That does get me one. So you're saying, hey, it works. Well, let me try it again because you always got to try it twice. One over two. Is one over two an integer? The million dollar question. Well, one over two is a fraction. And fractions, be, um, if it's a fraction where it has a remainder or a part, in this case 1 over 2 is, is a half or 0 0.5, then it's not, it can't be divisible by 1 with no remainder. There's some decimal form there. So in this case, I would cross it off. Any fraction, any fraction um, you know, if it's a, this is a, any fraction which gives you a decimal, like, you know, uh, like one half is equal to 0 0.5 or you know even 3 over 2 which is equal to 1.5 it gives you some part of it is a decimal and since our integer is always going to be a number that's divisible by 1 with no remainder I could cross this off can't have decimals or fractions like this cross that off cross that off what about this one right here the square root of 1 yes it it does equal 1 so it looks like it works what if I do the square root of 2, or the square root of 3, or the square root of 5? Well, these are all examples of irrational numbers. And I can tell it's an irrational number whenever there's a prime number underneath the radical sign. And we'll talk about prime numbers a little bit later on. But um, in this case right here, this answer C is not always going to get us a uh, positive integer. Um, because it's going to get us some funny numbers here called irrational numbers that uh, can't be uh, divisible by 1 with no remainder. And finally, P. Well, if I test this out with 1, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, you get the idea 1, 4, and 9 are all positive integers. They're all numbers that are divisible by 1 with no remainder, and, um, and they happen to all be positive. Okay, team, key word here is what an integer is. And then you have to add on the positive part. I hope you found this helpful. Keep on sending your questions. Check out one of the MTEL Math workshops in Harvard Square or sign up for some of the one-to-one -one MTEL Math tutoring. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.